and educational meeting and for uh, our distinguished uh, faculty and foreign faculty. Um, I have this very simple task of convincing you that PCI of asymptomatic CTO should be done in all coronary syndrome patients with at least 10% ischemia. The simple answer is no. However, I think we've known, we all know that there are no simple answers to complex questions. Complex questions always have complex answers. Just a little bit of historical, this is um, um, a little abstract I had sent. 1992, when there was a Mediterranean, Mediterranean Association of cardiology, and I sent this PTCA of chronic total occlusions. This was in Tunisia, 1992. What I called a simple new technique. This was basically the first report of an anchoring balloon. We used go with the wire and for 15 minutes, 15 minutes, and then upon failure, the balloon was inflated at low pressure. I'm sorry. Then we'd inflate the balloon. Interesting, I, using, look at the, at the bottom where it says the wires used. These are wires that are no longer available. Wires used, 18 high torque flop. Of course, Dr. Thierry Lefebvre has probably used those, I'm sure. 18, the old balloons could take an 18 wire. So we used 18 high torque floppy, 18 high torque intermediate, and of course, very old balloons from companies that no longer exist today. Anyway, <clears throat> a little bit of history. The title of the topic is as a CTO, as a chronic coronary syndrome. So we, when we discuss the issue now, we have to consider it as part of chronic coronary syndrome. And obviously, we cannot talk about chronic coronary syndrome now without mentioning the two latest and most important studies. First of all, the Orbita trial. The Orbita trial raised a lot of controversy. It's a brilliantly, brilliantly designed study. It covered everything except one tiny little issue that it missed. The central question in any study, any study we ever look at, is trying to answer a question. Every single study is trying to answer a question. What was the question that Orbita was trying to answer? The question was, are stents beneficial only as a placebo? That was their hypothesis in chronic stable angina, we have to remember. They recruited, it was such a brilliantly and expertly and meticulously designed and executed study. They recruited patients with anginal chest pains. But as we know, not all chest pain is due to cardiac cause. So all of them had to have a positive stress test to make sure it's ischemic. Not only that, all had to have a positive dobutamine stress echo. <laughs> Not only that, they all had to have a cardiac catheterization. They wanted a clean, a very clean study so that they could evaluate it properly. So all patients had to have a cardiac catheterization showing a severe lesion in one single coronary artery. Not two vessels, not three vessels. Then, remember they all had a stress test. Then, after the catheterization, all received optimal medical therapy. And then, all patients, all patients in the two groups, went into the cath labs. All patients had headphones and they listened to music. 
because it was a blinded trial. To get April, all had another blinded procedure, blinded meaning they went into the cath lab, but they did not know what happened in the cath lab. Supposedly, they went in to get a stent, but they had headphones and music, but obviously only half the patients received a stent. After six weeks, they all had another stress test. The second stress test, after six weeks of optimal medical therapy, those who did not get a stent improved by 11 seconds compared to the first stress. The other 50% who got a stent but did not know this is key. They did not know they got a stent. They improved by 28 seconds. 28, this was 11.8, so they said 16. P-value obviously not significant. So the conclusion, stents are nothing more than a placebo. And when you remove the placebo, which is what they aimed to do in this trial, then patients did not improve. This trial made a lot of headlines, and it had an editorial by David Brown that was titled, The Final Nail in the Coffin of Stents in Stable Angina. Everything was done perfectly, but they forgot one simple thing. The background of the trial was that PCI was, oh, which is what we all do, frankly. We show the patient, see how the artery was badly obstructed, but now, after PCI, it has become widely open. And so this leads to a placebo effect, making patients feel better. So what they did in the trial, if they, the concept was, if they don't see it, they will not know. In fact, what happened was the exact opposite of what they wanted to do. We evaluate the trial based on its ability to answer the question it posed, which is, is a stent nothing more than a placebo? That was the question. In this blinded, because the trial was blinded, nobody knew what they got. What do we have? None of the patients actually knew they received a stent. So there was zero placebo. If they all were having headphones and listening to music, nobody knew they got a stent. On the other hand, 100%, both groups, knew they had the first catheter, knew they had chest pains, knew they had a positive stress test, knew they had a positive dobutamine stress echo, and knew that they had a cardiac catheterization showing a severe obstruction in one of the major arteries feeding the heart. So what is that? They will get nocebo, which is the opposite of placebo. Nocebo is the negative expectations patients will have occurring as a result of a clinical experience with their doctor. So when the doctor says, well, we did a catheter and you have a str an, uh, the obstruction in the artery, they're going to get scared. And that, unfortunately, most people, who, most observers and editorials, they miss the main issue. The OMT arm, optimal medical therapy arm, patients showed an increase, as I said. The quick question is, why? You see, in all previous trials, medical therapy patients, if you just give them medical therapy, they improve by about 55 seconds. Whereas stent patients would improve by about two minutes, one and a half to two minutes. Why did both arms do so poorly? It is the nocebo. That is why. It's not that stents did bad. Optimal therapy only did only improved by 11 seconds. Optimal therapy to me would mean is horrible. It does nothing. Don't give medi medicines at all. The PCR, so as I said, why did both do so poorly? Because of the nocebo effect. 
On the other hand, objectively, dobutamine stress echo wall motion abnormality showed significant improvement in the PCIR. Now, I know it's a new term. How significant is nocebo? Well, a recent case report, this was in April 2018, in a patient who was in a, con a trial for a new antihypertensive drug. He received the, 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 uh, the box of the medicine, but it doesn't say if he was getting placebo or if he was getting a true medicine. And he got depression. He decided to kill himself. So he swallowed all the medicines. He was found shocked with a blood pressure of 80 over 50. They took him to the hospital. They looked at the box. They contacted the company, and it turned out he had placebo. He did not receive actual medicine. This is how strong the mental state of the patient is. This is called nocebo. After extensive discussions, this is not just my opinion, after extensive discussions over four days with the senior author, author Professor Daryl Francis, Russia Lamy's professor, he admitted finally. This is when I asked him, now can you explain why the PCR arm improved only by 28 seconds? Why in your previously quoted studies, it was about two minutes? He finally admitted, this is a very good question, discussion, and I will cover it. He did not. Then, not only that, the one, David Brown, who wrote the editorial, Final Nail in the Coffin, finally he admitted, you cannot be duped, fooled into the placebo effect if you don't know what treatment you got. A frank public admission. And Bobby Ye from Harvard went in saying, are you saying there is no placebo effect? So anyway, so let's forget the concept of stents are placebo. Not only that, the same group did another study, the Cook study. What they did is the exact same study like Orbiter, but they did a brilliant study using special sensor wires. They used special sensor wires. Used, they calculated FFR, IFR, corner perfusion pressure, which normalized following a physiological basis for forming a physiological basis for the improvement in meeting all that can be demanded of a therapy for ischemia. Now, the ischemia trial, it was not published yet, so we just have some slides. What they did do, they aimed to recruit patients with chest pain and moderate to severe ischemia. The concept was moderate to severe ischemia would mean moderate to severe angina. And they aimed to compare optimal therapy versus revascularization at three and a half years. They were powered, they were aiming for 8,500 patients, poor recruitment, they could only get 5,100 patients. So they made some changes to the primary endpoint to have adequate power to get their paper presented. The results, death and myon stroke were no different, but in stable angina. We were never looking for death a myon stroke. We know stents will not improve death a myon stroke. Hospitalization for congestive heart failure and resuscitated sudden cardiac death was not different. Hospitalization for unstable angina is a very broad term. We know many people are admitted for what is called unstable angina when they don't have unstable angina. This is a major weakness here and a major driver of the events. Most people are just given this diagnosis, and maybe when they leave, they're, they're discovered not to have unstable angina. Another thing, 10% of those patients had no angina. 36% had angina once a month. Once a month, we know we're not going to make them better. So in essence, 46% had no benefit from PCI. And we would not expect them to have a benefit. This is from 2004. It shows that you're likely to get benefit from angina if you have, the, this is from the Seattle um, Angina Questionnaire, if you have frequent angina, then you will improve when you get treatment for angina. If you have infrequent angina, you're not going to improve with therapy, whether drugs or stents. So in essence, 46% in ischemia would not improve. Why? Because the collateral networks are very common. Dear doctor, your time is up. Please.
One minute. Absolutely. Why, why is there no relation? Because of this. This is the heart. This is the arteries, the big arteries we look at, and these are the collaterals. It's very complex, and it varies from one person to another, and the ability varies so complex to actually evaluate this complex collateral network, which is actually what determines how patients feel. So, back to our question. Is the CTO patient truly asymptomatic, or did they gradually decrease their effort so that they appear asymptomatic? Stress test is important to objectively assess effort and symptoms. If asymptomatic, no PCI. If symptoms at high METs, no PCI. Symptoms at moderate to low METs, they should have PCI. So we have to re-ask about symptoms. Currently, after the inability of ischemia trial to link the level of ischemia with the degree of symptoms, I probably would not consider ischemia as a requirement Dear doctor, for PCI. Your time is up. Last slide. Why? All of us interventionists have seen this for 20, 30 years. One minute. One minute. You go in and you have this small side branch, small diagonal, and you stand the LED and this small diagonal gets obstructed and the patient, the patient has a less than two millimeter diagonal and the patient continues to have symptoms afterwards because of that small branch. Symptoms are not related to the extent of ischemia. And that's why this whole issue of stenting the side branch became popular. But we have to remember that CTO carries a significant complication rate more than PCI of regular non-CTO. Finally, as always, we have to remember the practice of medicine is a science and an art. It's aiming to improve patients' well-being. In chronic stable angina, we're not saving lives, we're not saving, info preventing infarctions. We are simply Dear trying doctor, to make our patients your time is up. Thank you for your attention.